Hi there, this is Rob from Reason101.net and uh, today I wanted to show you how to create a, um, a selectable filter, a selectable Thor filter using Combinator. So I have a sound that I've created here with the matrix um, and a Thor. It's just a pretty simple sound and uh, we'll use this as the basis for creating a, a Thor filter. So first thing I'm going to do is um, create a combinator. Uh, we're going to delete the mix channel. Don't need that. Uh, so let's delete that and just delete the selected one. Um, now inside here we're going to create a Thor. I love saying that word Thor. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to click the show programmer. Um, and right now this is an initialized Thor. But what I've done is I've created a second, um, a true Thor initialized patch. And what that does is it removes everything and it pushes, pushes all the faders to zero, pushes all the knobs to zero. Um, let's even delete the labels on the buttons because I don't like to have labels for stuff that isn't programmed. And there's our true Thor initialization patch. Uh, let's flip it over and uh, we'll do a couple of reroutings here. We'll take this, uh, the input that's going from the sound generating Thor, and we're going to move that to the combinator input. And then the combinator output is going to go back out to that same mix channel. Um, the two devices, the left and right, are going to go into audio one and audio two in Thor. And then we're all set up. Let's flip it back around. Let's delete these button labels. Because again, I hate having labels for stuff that's not programmed yet. Okay. And uh, now in the Thor programmer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select as my source, I'm going to select audio input one and audio input two. I'm going to move the amount up to 100 for both. And we're going to go into the left in and the right in on filter three. And what this is going to do is it's going to use this global filter three section um, in order to, uh, to change our parameters uh, using the combinator. So let's click on uh, show programmer. And for, um, for our first rotary, we're going to select the filter type. And that's going to be for filter three. So select Thor two, which is the only device that's in the combinator. And under rotary one, we're going to go all the way down. And this is a damn long list. But we're going to go down to filter three and we're going to select filter three type. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these values around to have the minimum be four and the maximum be zero. Um, so that when our rotary is at zero in Thor, it's bypassed. Okay. Um, when it's up to maximum, it's on a low pass filter, and then the other ones will cycle through, the other values will cycle through the different filters. So with that done, what we're going to do for rotary two is we're going to use that for the frequency. And rotary three we'll use for the resonance. And rotary four we will use for the envelope. Okay, so let's just program those real quick real slow depending on how fast your trigger finger is to get through this list. Okay, so that was the frequency that I selected for rotary two. And then rotary three is going to be the filter three resonance. And rotary four is going to be the filter three global envelope amount. Right there. Okay, so now you'll see when I change the frequency, you'll notice the frequency knob down here, the low pass ladder filter changes. Um, if I change the resonance, the resonance changes as well. Um, envelope will change the envelope knob button down here. Um, so that's done. Now the problem that we have with the envelope, and let's just, uh, let's just move these values around a little. Um, the problem that we have with the envelope is that the envelope itself is not free running. So to set this up properly, we're going to have to select the gate trigger. 
Um, we're also going to have to select the step sequencer up here. And we're going to have to actually use this step sequencer in Thor to get things running. Um, however, to do this, really not that difficult. Um, here's the steps that, that are needed. We're going to change the run mode from off to repeat. Um, in the programmer, we are going to take uh, the button 1, move that up to 100. The button 1 is the source, and the destination is going to be the step sequencer trigger, or step sequencer trig. So now, this button 1, and I'll just label it step trig. Okay, if it's pressed, it's going to select run, and it's going to run through the step sequencer. Perfect. Now, if we want to assign this to a button here in the combinator, um, and we'll call this the envelope on, what we do is we go to the programmer for the combinator, and in button 4, we change this to, or we select button 1, and when it's pressed, it's going to turn button 1 on in Thor, which is in turn going to run this. When we deselect it, it's going to turn it off, which is also going to turn off the step sequencer. Nice little trick for you. And to hear what that sounds like, we can play it. Turn the frequency up a little. And the envelope is off right now. But if we turn it on, the envelope is on. Turn it off, the envelope's off. On, the envelope's on. Let's just get it so you can really hear it. Off. And on. Okay, now you can affect the frequency, resonance, as we've seen. You can change the filter type. So that's what you can do with this little puppy. Um, what you also might want to do is assign a button to the comb filters plus and minus mode. Um, you can assign a button to the drive if you want to push the drive up a little bit. Uh, what you can do, what I might do is take the mod wheel and assign that to be the drive button or the drive amount. So you can go down uh, until you see the filter 3 drive amount. Uh, where was it? There it is. Filter 3 drive. Okay, and um, as a default, the default I believe is 64 for the drive filter. So you can do that at 64 and then move it down to probably about, I don't know, 105 or so. So now when you change that mod wheel, you'll see that the drive down here is being changed as well. And if you don't want this mod wheel moving, then all you have to do is just um, select, deselect mod wheel here, and then it won't move, but it's still going to move the, the drive parameter. Um, so you can push it a little bit if you want to hear it pushed more. Okay, so that's um, pretty much um, what you can do um, with these parameters, and uh, I hope you found that interesting. I hope that gives you some food for thought the next time you're looking to design a, a nice um, filter. This is really a great way to create a selectable filter. You can apply it, save the patch and apply it to any kind of sound source you want. So until next time, this is Rob from Reason101.net. I hope you come visit me soon. Thanks a lot for your time.